Well, thank you all for, uh, for joining our webinar today. Uh, this is a new series of webinars uh, that we've put together specifically for um, customers who bought Prospect CRM and are either still in our uh, onboarding process or about to start our onboarding process, um, or indeed have had the system for a little while and just want to kind of a bit of a refresher on, on some of the topics that we've chosen for this series of webinars. And so we thought we'd start um, just really by reminding everybody what we mean by Stock Aware CRM, why it's different, and some kind of insights as to the way we've designed it to try and help businesses like yours. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to go through today. I'm expecting this to be somewhere around the kind of 30-minute uh, mark, something like that. Um, and so uh, we'll, uh, I haven't got to rush off anywhere. So if people have got questions, I'm quite happy to stick around um, for those that uh, are, are also able to stick around and answer any questions that are, that are providing I can. Um, and so uh, yeah, presenting today, you've got me. My name is Stuart McLaren. Um, I'm the Sales and Marketing Director at Prospect CRM. Um, and I've been with the business uh, basically since we started it about 22 years ago. Um, so I've met a lot of customers, helped deploy and sell an awful lot of CRM systems and hopefully have some insights to uh, share with you. Uh, and so uh, to start with, um, I, I guess it's worth clarifying um, exactly what we mean, you know, by stock aware CRM and, and how that uh, differs really. And I guess the nuts and bolts of it are really that it's all to do with our uh, customer focus and the kind of customers that we target uh, and hopefully the kind of businesses that you are and then we'll look at some of the differences and why we've designed our system to specifically help businesses like yours uh, in a completely different way actually to what other CRM systems do quite often um, and so the type of businesses that you are hopefully and that we target it's uh, it's a relatively um, tight niche, if you like, um, but uh, we hopefully serve it very well. And it means that we can be very responsive to customers that want additional things that make sense in our system um, because we operate in a niche. If uh, a customer has something that they want added or changed in our system, we have a whole ideas portal that uh, I'll talk to you about and give you the link to a bit later on where people can put ideas and other customers can vote on them. And we can then see genuinely which ones are the things that, um, you know, and, and a lot of our customers are very similar businesses. Um, what are the things that customers want doing? And they go straight into our development uh, program because, you know, um, it, it's by doing those developments the customer wants, hopefully, that we end up with a system that can better and better serve you and help you grow your businesses. Uh, and so not only um, do we rely on some integration to your back office systems, uh, so they're listed there on the left, um, and really, unless you have one of those, our system is not an awful lot of use. We rely on our integration and we have deeper integration to these systems than you will see in, in any other CRM system. Um, and, I, and I'll show you why uh, in a little while. But yes, any of those inventory or accounting uh, all-in-one systems um, provide us with the information we need to try and give you this stock-aware CRM that gives you the benefits that we're hoping uh, to be able to achieve for you. And so integration and automation, I mean, it can be taken for granted. Actually, for customers like you, wholesale distributors or manufacturers who sell the majority of their business um, uh, or the most profitable part of their business is the B2B part. Um, it, it can be taken for granted, but it's, it's actually absolutely essential. I'm going to show you why this integration is essential because um, of the way that you guys operate um, and what we can provide you by having that integration. And so we're the leading stock aware CRM platform, chiefly because it was developed exactly with that in mind and so all the structures, all the data tables and uh, are there specifically designed to take data from those systems from the integration that we've written 
uh, and then analyze it in a way that can help you run and grow your businesses. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's the kind of the niche that we operate in and that's the kind of businesses you are. And we'll go on now to explore why that means that you need a different kind of CRM system. Just as a little aside, uh, without getting too boastful, uh, I can um, assure you, you you've made the right decision. Um, and so, you know, you may well have done this before you bought the system, but if you go and look at any of the review sites, uh, G2 or Zero Have an App Store or Captera uh, or Google, you'll see, um, uh, you know, that we have an awful lot of customers that do reviews for us. Um, and uh, we've also won an awful lot of awards, some of these from these review sites as well. Um, you know, which is something we're proud of and hopefully means that we, you know, are um, making our system better and better uh, in terms of the usability and what it can achieve for your business. Um, so why uh, uh, does StockAware give me different benefits to what I could get from a, a, another CRM system? Uh, and so I apologize if you've seen this recently, if you've been in our sales process, but it, it really is fundamental to what we do. And it, the, 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 the top bit, the funnel, is something that you'll have probably seen on, you know, management systems and management courses a million times, the funnel of doing business where, you know, I put more in the top and hopefully get more out the bottom. One of the key differences, though, in a B2B wholesale distribution manufacturing business is the flywheel at the bottom that you don't see very often, but is a critical part of our system and what we achieve. And that is to maximize the lifetime value of each customer once I've got them, because that's really where the growth is. And so let's explore this a little bit more. The funnel, we understand, is you know, broken into various sections where we do some marketing or promotion or attend a show or an exhibition or do a mail out or a telemarketing campaign, whatever it is to attract potential new customers. And we'll get some um, opportunities in the top of the funnel, uh, having attracted them. We then need to qualify those into quality leads, people that we know that we can definitely sell to. And then we pass them to our sales experts who will work on trying to sell to them for the first time. Um, and hopefully a proportion of those they'll be able to sell to and they'll get a first order from those new customers and they therefore become a customer. And that uh, funnel is pretty standard. You'd have seen it with different sections, but the same result really, um, you know, probably lots of times. And actually that's pretty much where other CRM systems begin and end because they're designed for uh, businesses that aren't like yours. Uh, in other words, they're designed predominantly for services-based businesses. Um, most CRMs were because they were the early adopters of CRM, services-based businesses. Um, and the profile that they have is that they want to find a new customer for their service or uh, consultancy or the project that they're trying to sell to them. Um, and typically, it's a big ticket item that will span over a lengthy period of time, could even be years, um, and we'll have an extended sales process. And once I get the order to go ahead with that uh, project or consultancy, whatever it is, the services, um, I'm then going to pass that through to our project management guys or our consultants or whoever it is that's delivering these uh, services. Um, and, and that project will then start and last a significant amount of time. And I'm not looking to go back next week or next month and try and get another order out of that customer. I might not speak to them from a new business sales perspective, you know, for another five years, perhaps. And so that's the crux of where, you know, uh, an awful lot of CRM systems focus on getting these big ticket deals in and then moving on to the next new customer. And for most of you, that should not necessarily be the profile of your business. Yes, you want to do that to attract new customers. We all have to attract new customers. But we then add in a section on onboarding and hopefully can pass people down to the flywheel. And if I just explain that a little bit. So the first order, that's great that I've got a first order from a new customer. Uh, it, it'll depend on what you sell. 
but a lot of our customers sell um, either a lot of a high quantity of low ticket items um, or perhaps um, smaller quantities uh, of items. And so, um, I mean, if I give you a really simple example, a customer perhaps that sells um, coffee beans, a coffee roasting company that, you know, has a warehouse full of coffee beans and roasts them and sells them to coffee shops. Um, the sales effort to find a new coffee shop, then to sell to them, maybe even send them a sample. In fact, in some cases, my first order might be a free sample, but let's assume we've sent them a sample and they decide, yes, okay, we'll try a bag of your coffee, we'll put it through the shop and we'll get some feedback from our customers and see if we, uh, you know, we wanna go ahead and start buying from you. So my first order is one bag of coffee. And if you analyze the effort, the time of my marketing guys, quali qualifying the lead, then the sales guys in contacting them, giving them quotes, as I say, maybe dealing with samples to get that one order, that first order in that example, and actually in a lot of examples, um, is not incredibly profitable and quite often a loss-making exercise. The point is that I wanted to get them on board as a new customer. And so we specifically section customers into onboarding. And we have the advantage of being able to look across a lot of customers and see what the profile is when a new customer buys. And it's surprisingly similar um you know for b2b wholesales whichever industry you're in when a customer places their first order uh, the likelihood if we do nothing of them placing a second order actually is um uh, in, in the minority it's well below 50 percent likely that they'll place a second order in fact it's still below 50 percent likely they'll place a third order it's only once they've placed four orders with you that the likelihood flips and having placed four orders, it then becomes more likely that they will place another order with us than not. And so we can consider them to be onboarding. So we hold them in onboarding until they've placed four orders with you so that you can apply some special extra attentive account management, whatever it is, to make sure we get over that fourth order and then pass them into my standard account management, which is the flywheel at the bottom, and the leverage and information that we can bring to increase the order frequency, how often they buy, increase their average order value, and to keep them for as long as possible. Because those three metrics for businesses like yours are compound growth, effectively. If I can get people to buy more often and a higher value and keep buying for me for, for longer, those three metrics will compound each other and achieve uh, incredible growth for your business. So that's why we spend so much effort and time on looking at that flywheel of business. And the way we do that, you'll probably be familiar with by now, um, which is um, RFM. And so the RFM is not our uh, invention. It's a um, a recognized system for managing wholesale and distribution businesses, basically. Uh, and it stands for, as you probably know, recency, frequency, and monetary value. Uh, when it first was uh, brought out, um, it was recency, frequency, and value, RFV. Uh, but RFM now is the recognized term. Um, and, and what it is, is it, it's a segmentation for customer bases based on an actual algorithm that you can look up. I mean, if you Google RFM, there's all the information out there. And this algorithm has been worked out quite precisely to compare customers against each other in your customer base so that we end up with your champions, your loyal customers, et cetera, et cetera, down through the customer segmentation based on how recently, how frequently, and the average order value that they place with me. Um, and so we've built that algorithm into uh, Prospect CRM. And it, it does that calculation for your customers on a nightly basis and will move them around in these segmentations so that you can identify which customers are most likely to buy if I do a promotion or the ones that I should be giving attention to because I might be losing them in order to increase uh, my customer retention average time period. Um, 
And it's in here, actually, that we add in the new customer section, which is where we hold people up until they've placed those four orders. Uh, and so you can identify them easily, always, that they're new customers who haven't yet got to the four order threshold. Once they have, they'll move into their defined category based on those orders. Uh, but up until then, I can make sure that I win them as permanent repeating customers. Um, and the way that we try and help um, use that uh, those RFM statistics are by displaying all of this. And obviously, you can look up the um, perceived wisdom uh, and processes around RFM. Um, but our onboarding team will try and focus with you on what we call our growth playbook for your business that uses RFM as one of the tools and various other tools that we'll discuss um, in our system to help you get um, quick wins and long-term benefits out of deploying the Prospect CRM system. And so the way this growth playbook is organized is that at the bottom of the y-axis, I've got things that I can do where there's low investment and should be an early return on that investment and things along the x-axis, which are quick wins um, with existing customers up to building new relations and getting new customers, and things up here that are, require more planning and more configuration. So basically the bottom left few blocks is here, you should be able to do very quickly and get some real quick wins out of the system. So we've got, for example, call all the lost and closed RFM segments to identify the reasons for churn. We're not saying necessarily you can win all those back, but if I can identify why they stopped buying from me, you know, is it that my product changed? Is it that the account manager changed? Is it that I changed courier and things started getting broken more often? What, what, was, what were the reasons that they went somewhere else rather than buying from me? And whilst I might not be able to win them back, what I can do is take that intelligence, hopefully fix whatever the, reason, the key reasons were, and therefore, on average, extend my retention. Um, we help you with some functionality in our system. There's the problem tracking or service ticketing system within here, where you know if customers are saying, oh, when I rang up with a damage on delivery, nobody really came back to me, you could implement our problem tracking, give them a formal identification number for the issue that they've had, have mandatory to-dos and follow-up set on those problems that are logged within the system to make sure that we get to resolutions for them. So there's, there's various things, you know, right up to here where using our integration to MailChimp, you could run a campaign targeting message with targeted messaging to um, customers that are in potential uh, churn risk segments. So, you know, about to lose, hibernating, those kind of things that I can message them to try and reactivate them and make sure we retain them. Um, and so on for each of these. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the boxes, but it's worth mentioning here um, a couple of these quick win ones. Chasing the missed orders from existing customers. So given that we've got the history for your back office system, we can... Um, so I'll just break out quickly because Devin's asked a couple of questions. Um, where can I get the growth playbook? So our, our onboarding team have the growth playbook um, and can um, provide you with it. Um, I suspect we'll provide these slides to everybody at the end of uh, this, this webinar. So you'll be able to get it from here as well. But to go through it and make plans for your business, you'd uh, definitely want to speak to whoever's doing your onboarding. Um, you also asked a question about uh, iOS and Android apps. We do have a progressive web app um, already um, that you can uh, pin as an app on either uh, iOS or Android. Uh, so I, perhaps I'll um, take that offline and can send you some information on how to do that. But yeah, we do have a progressive web app, which is kind of the future of apps really um, these days. So. Um, I will perhaps take that one offline, Devin. Um, so chasing missing orders from existing customers, we do, um, by, by having the information from your back office system, we can start looking at patterns and predicting when customers should be ordering. Uh, and so we can then give you a list, basically, of customers that, based on the data, 
probably should have ordered by now. Uh, and we can even give you a sort of estimated value of their order so that your account managers can look at a list of customers. We'll show you, I'll show you that in a second um, and get them to place orders. Another one that's not an incredibly well-known feature in our system um, is our quote to order workflow. So sending out quotes is what a lot of, a lot of uh, you guys will be doing and then probably setting up a to-do in the CRM system to chase that customer if they haven't placed an order or we have reports in our system for any quotes over X number of days um, old that haven't, been, that haven't been ordered yet that you can you know, get the sales guys to work on. You can also, though, optimize the quote to order workflow by embedding on every quote that you send a, an ordering button. And so our system will allow a customer, and you can embed that either in the email or, in fact, on the PDF. Um, and so the customer, when they receive the quote, if you know they speak to their, their colleague and a few hours later decide they want to go ahead, they can just click the button and place the order with you without the sales guys having to chase them up. So you know, that alone can increase your order frequency by getting customers to just self-serve once you've sent them a quote and click the order button and go straight ahead and order it from you. And obviously we're capturing all the information about who's ordered it, uh, their order number, even their IP address actually. And then the final one I'll uh, mention here is the order value, because the, these three are absolutely critical. And as I say, um, you know, on the flywheel, these are the ones that compound each other. So average order values, um, with our system actually is a fairly straightforward thing to implement some beautiful bits of functionality that can really help lift the average order values. Um, you know, and we've seen customers that deploy prospect and um, particularly um, put a lot of effort into these areas, increase average order values by over 25% across the board. Um, so the use of the magic matrix, I'm going to show you that in a second, because I don't think that's an incredibly well known piece of functionality. Um, again, it's not our idea. It's, a, it's actually a Harvard Business School idea, the magic matrix, but it allows you to uh, make sure that you're maximizing um, product penetration into your customer base, that people are buying as many of your products as possible. Um, and we have an even more focused version of that with our expert not why report. So if you specifically know that any customer of mine that buys product X should definitely buy product Y off me because they go together. Then you can run a report specifically that says, give me a list of customers who bought product X but did not buy product Y, and I'm going to target them either with a telemarketing campaign or an email campaign or whatever it is. Um, and then the other thing that has a massive impact on average order values is configuring the product upsell. It's actually upsell, cross-sell, or must-sell. And this allows you to link products to each other, either in an upsell scenario. So somebody is buying, um, in the example I'm going to use, is a, a jam uh, company that sell jam making equipment, uh, jam, jam jars, fruit, everything to do with jam, basically. And so if somebody rings me up and wants to buy a piece of jam making equipment. Um, by linking products, when I'm putting it on the quote, the system can prompt me and say, look, that's our entry level jam making uh, equipment. Why don't you offer them the more uh, professional piece of equipment? Yes, it's £100 more, but they can produce three times as much with it. And so that will prompt me automatically to try and upsell them on the piece of equipment they're buying. And then if they accept my offer at the click of a button, it will replace the original piece uh, on the quote. Then we can do cross sell. So if someone rings me up and wants to buy a load of jam jars, as I'm putting the jam jars on the quote, the system can prompt me and say, you should offer them lids to go with those and labels, why not? And so I can upsell, uh, I can cross sell, sorry. And then a must sell is if I'm selling them the jam making um, equipment, it might prompt me and say, if they're buying this, they also need to buy the power supply uh, because it won't work without it. So it's a must sell when you buy this product, you have to have the power supply. So, and those are all configurable for you uh, in the system so that you can increase your average order values. So that's really where we excel. Um, and 
you know, those are the things that hopefully we're really great at. The enhanced customer analysis, and I'll show you a little bit of that, but particularly the RFM, maximizing the customer lifetime value um, by particularly increasing the order value and the frequency, but also the length of time that we keep our customers for. And as I say, those are compound growth things. So uh, a couple of minutes left. I'm just going to show you um, a, a quick view of this system that's uh, the jam making company. You'll all be familiar, hopefully, with this dashboard, which shows me my RFM categories. There is some data in the system, although it's sort of demo data. I've then got a list here of people that should have placed an order. So I can go straight to those customers, call them and see why they haven't placed an order. Um, and we can analyze, you know, for my champions, I might have a look at perhaps Jamie Oliver's kitchen. I can see all of his transactions that have gone on and I've got some really useful analysis on his in, the invoicing pattern from us to him, the order pattern, you know, and I can zoom in on the last whatever that I want to see. And what is it that he's buying most of by value? And what is he buying most of by frequency? Uh, and so this is all intelligence that helps me as a salesperson or account manager better serve that customer and try and make sure that we're offering the right things at the right time. We also then step into the magic matrix. And I can see that uh, Jamie Oliver's Kitchen have bought finished jam, jam making kits and large equipment from us. Uh, but they haven't bought some of our limited jam flavors, ingredients, multi-packs or jam jars. In fact, they are unaware. And so these are the segments of a magic matrix. I've defined the categories for my products, and I'll come on to that in a second. And then the idea is for each customer to move as many of these through the process so that they've bought them. So I want to make, make them aware. Then I want hopefully some opportunities or quotes out there for those products, and ultimately we want them to have bought them. And so let me just show you uh, that magic matrix in action. So the first thing we have is a dashboard that shows me for my product categories. And these categories we pick up for all new systems from your back office system, your product categories that you've got set up. Now, quite often that isn't going to be the right categories for a magic matrix. So it's a starting point. Uh, we don't hold a link once we've imported the, those categories on the products. We don't hold it um, as a link for magic matrix. We do for product categories. Um, but you can reconfigure these so you can define a full set of magic matrix categories if, for example, my product categories are set up for accounting purposes rather than sales purposes. Um, and so we've got some categories here that kind of make sense. You know, are people buying jam jars, multi-packs, finished jam? And I can, I, I can see that our ingredients, uh, components, actually, we've got a, literally a couple of customers buying it, one that uh, where we've got an opportunity, but most of my customers are unaware that we even sell these ingredient components. And so I can have a look, you know, for ingredients, what's going on. I actually do have that opportunity there that I can see, and I could go and have a look at that by clicking on it. Um, but here uh, is where I can then decide what my strategy is going to be, and perhaps it should be around these ingredients. So I'm going to open the magic matrix itself. And the magic matrix is basically a list of customers and a list of categories with the color coding showing me whether a customer has bought. And again, if I click, it'll tell me what he bought uh, and when. Um, so I can do that for any of these whether we've got an opportunity, and so I can drill straight to the opportunity, um, or if they're aware, which campaign were they included in that made them aware of that product and they haven't bought yet. And so from the magic matrix, I have the ability to build awareness. And so I've decided already that I'm gonna do awareness for ingredients, components, because that's really where we got the biggest opportunity. I could choose some for some specific account managers. I'm perhaps going to target because I want quick wins. These customers, my champions, loyal customers, right down to the promising, they're the most likely to buy from me. 
I could choose specific industries, so perhaps restaurants only with a particular message and then come and run another one for retail shops that I sell to. Uh, I'm going to target everyone who's unaware or aware. I'm going to make them re-aware, if you like. And then I can either add uh, a new campaign activity um, that will be linked to MailChimp. Um, we can send the message or it could be a telemarketing one, or I can add these people into an existing campaign that's running. And so that allows me, I mean, really quickly and easily to target specific people with specific messages that are relevant to them and help me grow my business. Uh, and so, I mean, I guess that's really what I wanted to um, show you guys. Um, I know we're out of time pretty much, um, but if you haven't already contemplated taking an onboarding experience with your system, then obviously I would highly recommend it because these are the sort of things I'm showing you that our onboarding team is expert at setting up. Um, but in terms of the resources, um, if we go, uh, sorry, I've clicked on, yeah. Yeah, the res resources available, um, we will send these slides out. There's links here to all the what's new, so that you know, the quote to order workflow, the, the magic matrix, there's stuff in there about that. The academy that hand holds through all these things um, and you know, your, our support is uh, dynamic, as you know. Um, and I'd encourage you to go through the kind of the next steps in your system, um, which uh, is available. Uh, let's just show you by going into settings and continue set up. And there's a whole raft of uh, things that you can go through here specifically to help you get going with your system uh, and get it to achieve what uh, a stock aware system, CRM system can do for, for your business. So thank you for your attention. Um, apologies for running over uh, three minutes there. Uh, if there are any questions, by all means, uh, drop them in the chat. Um, Oh, that's very kind, Devin. Thank you. Uh, has just sent a comment saying the sport team with Prospect is phenomenal. And uh, thanks for the webinar. Well, thanks for attending. And I'll uh, come back to you specifically on that, uh, um, the, uh, the web apps that we've got for you. But if there are any other questions, by all means, um, stick them in the chat or um, go straight to the Q&A uh, and drop me a question. Um, but we've recorded this webinar. Uh, it'll be sent to all of you um, that have attended uh, and to the other people that registered who weren't able to attend. So there don't seem to be any more questions. I thank you for your attention. And uh, hopefully I've uh, reaffirmed that uh, you've got a system that can really help your business grow. Um, and um, yeah, with our onboarding team, we are focused on uh, helping you make that happen. So thanks very much and uh, have a nice rest of the day. Ah, Alex, can we share a link? The colleagues who haven't registered. Yes, Alex, absolutely. Um, the link that we send will just be a hyperlink so you can share it with as many people as you like. No problem at all. Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs> Cheers.